Can you explain that to me for me? Thanks. So, did you guys uh, read this assignment? Uh, I invite you to ask me a question. Do we need uh, to crawl these things? And no. Do I don't want you to implement anything. Sarah was giving that talk about semantic web. I went and looked at uh, Wolfram. Was it Wolfram? Wolfram Brown. Wolfram. Yeah. Alpha. And I typed in, you know, how old is Queen Elizabeth? Whatever. It gave a number, right? And I typed in, how many years along is Queen Elizabeth? And didn't know the query. That's the exact same thing in a different context. So they're, they're, they're Englishly, they're equivalent, right? So it looks like, I'm discussing, like, wouldn't you make your national process machine be able to handle that by following basic, like, English rules to, grant, to break, break the sentence apart? Be able to identify the key components of it because it's the same thing saying how old are you, how many years along are you. It's the same way to say it, just a different way to say it. Yeah, so um, uh, uh, I think um, it is very natural for us to expect that. Um, there was a very um, well known, um, uh, uh, <coughs> there's some a very seminal piece of work that I read, um, uh, and it was by uh, a person named William Wood. Um, try to for me or search for me what's in a link, uh, Bill Wood or William Wood. So um, he um, wrote extensive piece of uh, uh, material and, and had wonderful arguments as to why national language processing cannot be solved and why it is computationally you know, unsolvable problem and, and, and be complete and those kind of things. He made those arguments. Mm -hmm. um, William Wood, yeah, William Aaron Wood, the first guy. What do you mean? There is foundation for semantic web. Hmm? That's the title, what is in the link? Foundation yeah. for semantic web. Yeah. Yeah, open it. I typed it. <laughs> so, uh, no, this is a talk, but uh, he has an article. I, I'll, I'll try to find it and post it also. So, he, uh, so um, some of the, one of the problems sometimes we face here, like your, your earlier discussion about context is also a very hard question. And uh, um, uh, it is so, it, it's interesting, I was just uh, talking to uh, a student uh, from India this yesterday morning, uh, Google ch talk, and um, um, again he was talking about uh, context also. It's a word that we, um, uh, you know, where um, uh, Ramnath Guha wrote a PhD thesis from Stanford, 1993, very well known piece of work. So uh, uh, unfortunately, and, and I have written uh, a paper, if you look at the uh, paper, this paper, so far yet so near, so far schematically, yet so near semantically. Right, you see, uh, 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 so the things may be May, may use very different words, mm -hmm. and yet it means the same. Right? So there's actually a paper, 1992, uh, is the title of the paper. If you, if you Google for it, you'll find it. Um, but to give a very short answer in five minutes is not something that is easy to, so the context as in linguistic context, context as in knowledge representation, context, in, in, so there are many, many different ways you can talk about context. And, on these particular questions, um, so by and large, um, systems have not been developed to understand the language, natural language, in an open world context. If we can narrow the domain sufficiently, then you can potentially do that to a certain level of, uh, to this, Certain, certain degree into certain quality. Um, what happens is, and, it, and they, I can also draw another analogy, uh, for example, to uh, that of face recognition. Mm -hmm. That um, if you uh, tell a camera to far, you know, recognize any uh, human face and give you the name, that's not going to happen, typically. But if you train the thing on a set of people, and, and, and then you uh, expose 
and then um, uh, they ask you, uh, you ask the camera to recognize a face from the database of known persons, and now there exists reasonably good algorithms and you know, <coughs> tra learning techniques to be able to do that. So to be able to get to a certain level of natural language processing, what is going, of the kind that you are talking about, what is going to take is, at least this is my personal view, so not everybody will share, is um, a combination of um, uh, the NLP techniques, and within the NLP, there is uh, computational linguistic techniques, use statistics. There is rule-based techniques, whereby people who have linguistic skills can go and uh, encode the different way to say the same thing um, and say what is same and what is different in a in a well-crafted uh, language. So there are some last uh, centers um, in the world. I think, uh, for example, there is a very well-known center at uh, uh, this uh, university in Baltimore, uh, uh, the one that is known for medicine also. Um, the name is for mind. So um, there are a number of, uh, 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 and they have invested tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of hours of human time in encoding rules for language understanding. And when it is done in those contexts, then you get good results. But given that, you know, we can deal with any kind of topic and there has been no, you know, sort of prior work done, then that particular rule-based approach won't work. Then you have to look at computational linguistic approach. Then you have to give a lot of training material and see if that works. If that if that does not work, you have ways to uh, narrow down uh, the solution. So either you say I'll reduce the scope, and I'll only talk about biology, and then in the biology I will I will put all the biological knowledge. So in biomedicine I'll take everything in UMLS and SNOMED and all these other you know biological knowledge repositories and because those facts are already known. So suppose uh, I already know that this entity with this relationship with this entity, subject, predicate, object, I already know this uh, particular thing as a fact. Then the question of simply the linguistic variations that come. Then I have really cut down on the search space, the number of ways I need to, things that I need to understand. Right? Then maybe some article here not, adjective here not, right? He has a, good uh, friendship, he is, he is a friend of, A is a friend of B. He has a good friendship with B. He is a very good, he, he is an exceptionally good friend of B. And I have variations of these, right? And then I can write uh, again certain ways to take care of that and, but I know that A friend with B is already known. Then the things that I have to figure out is much less, right? If I just did not know anything about that, then it is much harder. If I had no concept of friendship, things become harder. So anyway, the question to you, uh, to, to your question is the, that no, this uh, we have not developed uh, these web search engines that are not limited by any particular scope to be able to solve that problem. Okay. I have more questions. We'll talk offline. I have a couple more questions about it. Yeah. So uh, uh, coming to our question. Ah, yeah. And uh, let's see. This is. Uh, this is. This is a great piece of work, um, uh, and, and I very much uh, encourage uh, anybody who is interested in linguistics and semantics to certainly read this. Okay. It's interesting. Um, I also had a panel uh, in, in 1996, that kind of time frame, um, uh, you know, in, in what's, what's in a link. Um, and, and we had some very good um, uh, expert on that panel uh, that, that we had discussed about semantics. But um, let me share one interesting anecdote um, that, uh, that occurred in that panel. Um, uh, it's a very fundamental thing about semantics. So um, there is a uh, 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 reasonably well-known professor. His name is uh, Robert Miesman. Uh, and um, uh, he, he's, uh, uh, he's done a good bit of work on um, uh, 
data modeling and, and uh, ontologies from database uh, perspective. So um, we are talking about uh, you know what's in a link and what is semantics kind of thing. Very core fundamental question. Um, this was in, uh, uh, in in Georgia. We have this stone mountain there. So we had uh, you know hotel there. And what it does is to in those days we still did not have too many of those uh, these uh, projectors like this. So we had the slide project, you know, project. We, the transparencies. We put the transparency. And here the blank transparency. And he put a, uh, you know, with the red marker, he put a red dot. Right. And it says, what is this? What is that? What is the red dot? I mean, he, he, he had put a red what, what will simply show up as a red dot, that's all. The question is, what is it? Right. What is the meaning? Right. Semantics is meaning. What's meaning? What is it trying? What is it trying to say? Is it as <laughs> well? So, in the discussion, that's it. These are the kind of stuff that came about. A setting sun where the sun becomes red. Right? That could be there. Uh, a dot on the head of a um, uh, 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 you know married woman in India. Right? That could be there. Right? Many many uh, possibilities you can come up with. Right? Any, anybody wants to add uh, before I say the, you know. So the, the, the answer to that was, really, it comes down to what is the agreement among us. So if you want to say what it is, right, then we need to come down to agreement among them. That is exactly what the ontology is about. Ontology is not about the particular formal language and, you know, owl and isa and, you know, slot and frames. It's not. That's not the. That's not what ontology stands on. The foundation of ontology, technical term for that foundation of ontology is ontological commitment. And in the layman term, it is agreement. It is what we agree to. And what we mean by we? Well, whosoever is going to communicate about it, whosoever is going to use. So. The group of users that care about that particular concept, right? If there is an agreement, then that is what the meaning is. The meaning comes only from agreement, at least in the human language and at least in the human communication. We can argue Aristotelian uh, and you know um, uh, 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 view of ontology whereby you are talking about the immutable facts of the world, that any object has a weight. You can talk about those kind of facts, for sure. And there, we hope that the agreement is there is because it's the nature, it's the, you know, everybody has to come to the same conclusion. So, okay, that's there. There's not, not much to argue about. But otherwise, much of the things that we create in as data and as language constructs and all that, if you agree upon the, uh, then the ontology, uh, and the meaning, the foundation of that is the agreement. Then you build, build things about that. If I know exactly what this means and we all have agreed to that, then using it as a reference to with, with certain very well-defined relationship, I can help you understand this. And we can come to a, agreement much more uh, you, you know, much faster because there is a very clear understanding of that relationship and this is also grounded, this is a ground truth we are in the sense of agreement and so we can define this. And so we can do. So if you, you certainly want to use that formal language so that as the programs read this data, as the humans read this, there is the same conclusion that they all reach. Right? That's why we use formal language. Right? And so for the Web, on the web, for you know, we use the web ontology language, out. Right? So that is how the thing comes about. But, um, all right, so I think we went to uh, the digression as we often do. Uh, here, questions? What else? you provide the answer you provided is based on natural language processing, right? 
why did you recommend it was in town do that? So why typical search engines don't have they don't have built in they don't have ways to understand all these uh, you know language in an open world context because they they deal with facts in all the different domains and they're not created yet suppose they were to use already a model where the model was a human's age and age is uh, you know uh, you know with age is a concept of old or young then it is much more possible for them to come up with an answer or take other example of that of you know you remember in the um, I don't know whether I made this of, uh, uh, arguments when we were talking about a semantic annotation of sensor data and remember there was a time ontology and the point here is that uh, I have let's say a data item a sensor sends me data at this time I recorded this observation this temperature right now if I just use, if my machinery, computational machinery, simply has time or tag, time equal to something, then if I ask a question, what was the temperature at 12.01, uh, where the temperature was taken at 12.00? I can't answer that. Or you can say, um, what will be the temperature at midnight or at noon? I can't answer that. Or, um, what was the last reading before this one? I can't answer that. Or, what was the average temperature during 11 and 12? I can't answer that. Right? However, if I use time ontology, our time, let's say, and I do semantic annotation that this time instance is the uh, th this this is a time instance as defined in the ontology out time as a time instance, which then defines the whole concept of time interval before this time, after this time. All those things are defined in the ontology, right? So that knowledge now is available to my machinery that processes this whole the question or query or whatever you ask. So now I can give that answer, right? Why can you get before? You could interpolate, you could, do you know, if you have what, just one sensor? In fact, if you have like, one sensor, you know that the time at time t was 12.001 degree or whatever, or one second it was 10 degrees. You want to ask for it at time t plus 001, like a, whatever. Right, where does it that. get a concept of plus? You ask, you say, I want to know what time it is at 10, like 10 minutes later. But what is the concept of later? How does well, it have? Well, it knows right when it started, so you know what your time zero is. No, but where does it, see, search engine is a program. How did that program get that knowledge to uh, do? The machine would have had that, the machine would timestamp that, the sensor log would timestamp that time zero. Oh, no, but how do you even know it's a timestamp? Right? Huh? Machine doesn't know the word later, right? I mean. Yeah. Well, you would put later, I mean, what is it, 10 minutes from now? You give it a, I'm confused, like... Well, what, ten, think about 10 minutes from now. How would the machine know what 10 minutes from now? It knows what the absolute time is, so it can interpolate based on... How does it even now. know the concept of time has before and after? It has it, because it has to, it's a clock cycle. So it has to know... How does it know it's a clock? How does your program know it's a clock? How do the concept, the, the model of clock is not there in your program. But the model of absolute time is. No. It doesn't understand the English language. Our, it doesn't understand what we mean when we're give relative. I'm just not saying, because you would know, right, when you put the, if it says 10 minutes after, it's going to take the relative time right now, and maybe 10 minutes after. Consider writing a little bit of program okay. to achieve just that. How would you teach a machine that it knows before and after time? Meaning, like, you would just look at a linguistic context. You would know that when people type in 10 minutes later, it's 10 minutes from my previous, from my current time. How? I mean, if this would, how do you know that, you how, how does program know that it needs to even, <laughs> keep track of uh, 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 something follows something. That even even that concept is not there. Because you're you're constantly recording your data. You're storing your data. 
Right, your temperature data is always being stored somewhere. You're storing, fine. I yeah. get it there. There's one. So you're storing, and then you you program. But, but how? So that's why you need to store problem, right? No, no. Even if you store, but how do you know? Uh, suppose I store time at every reading that sensor did. That that is fine. That's the database. Yeah. But how do I know that? How does the software know that this one follows this one follows this one? How does it even have an idea that parallel one is comes after twelve? How it doesn't. It's Unless you said it explicitly, it doesn't. Yeah, if you, you're right, it's mathematical, but then you have to teach mathematical. See, Wolfram, Wolfram Alpha has actually a mathematical model. It actually, that specializes in math, all the concepts related to mathematics, arithmetics, and number of things like that. It can do that. Google can't do that, for example. Right? So, actually, it has built-in model of how do you compute, uh, for example, Wolfram Alpha, you just type a series of numbers. It will understand that you are the next one. What it will tell, it can tell you what the next one is. Because it has built up a mathematical, all the mathematical concepts of let's say sequences and all this kind of stuff. It has built in that. It has learned that. And because it is mathematical, it is precise. It has even been able to do that. It has built in R system R. Have you heard of R system, right? There's a, uh, uh, there's a language called R very powerful language for mathematical computations right. called art, okay? So it has built in that. And if you can, you, you ask the concept like average, mm -hmm. it has built in that. Mean, concept of mean, it has built in that. Okay. So it can give you that. And you give it, you, you, you can give it a, a series of, you know, uh, a matrix. You can upload a matrix that it will, uh, uh, and it, it, it'll, it'll, uh, uh, it has already implemented all the functions for metric computations. So Vulcan Alpha, uh, Alpha has been totally customized to deal with math. But it has not been customized to deal with time, let's say. It won't be able to do things with time. So to be able to do with the time, you will have to use the model of the time and understand the computational framework around the time, before and after. So what happens is that um, uh, we start out by ground to, you know, making a ground to say that this is a time instance as defined in this ontology. And the ontology then has the entire framework of concept of before time, after time, what is a period, period, period of time has a start time and end time, right? And that it has defined concept of hour and minute and second and microsecond and millisecond. It has all those things. And it has um, uh, potentially the ability to, uh, uh, I don't know this for sure, but you can define now, near, concept of near. But suppose I, I, I have now a, a spatial ontology. You will define the concept of near there. And then question, you, you, the, the, even there, issues are very challenging. You say, how far is this place from that place I can see there? Is it, are you talking about linear distance or the distance for me to travel? Then I'll have to go via door and go there, which is a different distance, right? How do you know what you mean? And how in so it has so what you'll do is in ontology, where possible, you'll define that. So you say what is the concept of near that you're interested in? It can come back saying, I have two concepts of near, which one do you want? Then you say, and then you can give answer. So these are the kind of stuff questions you do. But let me simplify something just so that we all have shared understanding. The way we argue uh, use uh, you know, uh, significant semantic power is that we take a data, we uh, associate with that a formal definition with reference to a reference. Reference being ontology. Ontology implies ontological commitment, meaning a shared agreement among people and computer programs that use it. I'm simply, if I, I'm giving, an, I'm not using a formal term here to describe it, but that's what it means, right? Furthermore, so that is one important part. Second important part is that because we use typically knowledge representation framework, or it's a language, it's a knowledge representation language, right? Our is a language, right? That uh, along with that comes uh, ability to describe things in a more powerful way than let us say you can describe in uh, traditional programming language, like say C, right? You can describe such things as constraints, you can describe other you know, uh, things as transitivity, you can describe uh, value constraints and a number of things that come with that language. Very limited set compared to human language. Right? 
power is extremely limited. Right? It's a subset of first order logic. And there are many concepts you can talk about that are not first order logic, right? In the real world, real day world. So, uh, 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 but still better than you know uh, anything out there uh, in in the traditional uh, you know uh, um, uh, data structures, for example. And then associated with that comes certain computational mechanisms that you may have implemented algorithm for uh, uh, doing subsumption and class membership, so inferencing, or you may have implemented more specialized algorithm like finding a path, semantic associations, or you may have implemented some other thing like proximity distances. So you can implement specialized functions and computations to provide you the things. Having defined something, uh, you know, let's say what is near in terms of time or location, you suddenly made a very powerful, you suddenly made a very powerful computational system. Because now once you implement it, everybody can use it. We are, we are in a web world and people can you know, use the namespaces and use that particular dis definitions, right? And uh, you know, use it. So compared to the 20 years ago, where you had a program lying on a computer that had to be shipped and re you know compiled and executed again and it kind of stuff, right? Now things are uh, you know a lot better shared. Um, there are a lot of you know uh, shared understanding language. Exactly what you mean when you say something in the in language like R. And associated with, associated with that, there is a variety of more advanced computational mechanisms that you can do. And yet, OWL is not going to do what NLP system can do. And NLP system is not going to be able to do what OWL can do. And OWL can't do what machine learning can do, and vice versa. So, so, so uh, that semantic techniques is still a complement to natural language processing, and vice versa. So this particular uh, thing uh, that I will put up, the, look at this one here. This is a very interesting article. I hope you guys uh, got a chance to. It's only two pages long. Really, worth reading. This is very important, and you will particularly enjoy reading this uh, because it shows you how uh, background knowledge and knowledge base can help you uh, improve NLP and how. The problems are very hard to solve just using the basic NLP, or uh, the most advanced NLP, in fact. And why you know having use of background knowledge is uh, something that can um, take it far beyond. It so happens, just as an aside, that we work with a company that does electronic medical record data mining, and we are indeed uh, uh, combining NLP techniques with semantic web techniques to make a powerful system. Why? So the question, did everybody get, did you get started to say? Now, uh, I, I have, uh, I have deliberately said that, that um, unlike the um, typical um, assignments you have gotten most of the time before, where and in fact, if you remember Web Information System, we had an assignment, we had assignments that were totally well spelled out. I think it was they were very well spelled out, I think most of you. Right? So um, I'm not doing that here. Um, so um, think about, again, in the real world, where you are designing a new software product or a new device or something. That is not a closed world process. That's not a process where everything is known ahead of the time. Right? So the innovation does not occur when you are, if you are, a, you are, doing, you are you, you, somebody outsources you the work, say implement this for me. They are not looking for you to think out of the box or do anything new or come up with new features. They say implement this. That's all they are doing. Right? But the reason that you guys do graduate studies is that you from you know, at a very, I'm, I'm simplifying it, but you, you know, you start with learning and skills to learning how to learn, to train how to learn, uh, how to teach learning how to learn, right? 
and, and that's the progress that you or you uh, you become very expert at what you do to somebody uh, uh, who can innovate out of the air think of their own problem to solve excite number of people around there prototype something go to venture capital get the money do the company and become rich uh, right? I <laughs> <laughs> uh, when i did my, when I did my company, uh, uh, I don't know the latest statistics, but uh, in, uh, in my in a previous company, when I did that about more than a decade ago, only 8% of the company succeeded. How many people in your company? Uh, we grew to more than 30 people in two years. At, at, the, at the highest, it had about 35 people. percent of startup businesses survive. Oh. Only some businesses that have started to survive. So. Okay, so um, uh, so so uh, there is no single answer to this question okay? because you're going to have to make an assumption of what um, um, uh, what do you expect from the semantic search engine. Remember, I just said, question, if you are building a semantic search engine, how will you process the given example of data and documents, and what information your search engine will collect and acquire about the data or document? Also explain why. So there is what, you know, why, what, and how. All the three questions are there. However, I have only asked you about how will you look at the three types of data I have, documents I have? I ask you to ignore the, uh, for example, this link of photos would change every day. So I ask you to ignore that part, that, that it will change every day. Don't worry about the dynamic nature. Um, and I have not even asked you how you are going to, at least for the part of the answer, you don't have to explicitly say, um, other than for explanation, why you made that choice. What, uh, how you going to do computation? I did not ask you that. I didn't say whether you're going to use uh, uh, a description logic or whether you're going to use um, machine learning or using index. I didn't ask you that. What I ask you is, what will your search engine understand from each of these documents? So let us look at the documents because what I ask you is that here is this document which is a news ML content, right? And you remember in my class, I, in earlier I said this XML plus, right? So this is a semi-structured data document, right? XML is semi-structured document or data. So I had made several comments in those days, you know, when I talked about it uh, and why XML is syntax and or structure and not semantics. And yet I'm asking you how a semantics is changing will do that. So I am expecting you to explain how would your search engine process this data to get some semantics out of it. So we have to assume that these are the three documents we have, right? Yes. So you're going to, so basically you're going to have to, um, uh, and again to give further hint, you uh, remember the triangle. Where not everybody liked the triangle. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 the part of the triangle that the syntax, the structure, the semantical you know things, that is very relevant here. So we can use the hyperlinks and so on. Yeah 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 you can do that. But the point here is that you see you have attributes here, and you have things like uh, formal name and your things, you know, so you have various tag names. What would you do with that? Really you have nice. various tag values. What will you do that? You'll just give me one or two examples. You know, I don't, not the whole documents, no. Just, a, 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 you know, what would you pick up and give me an example? Kind of stuff. And how would, what, 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 what semantic thing will come out of, like, you know, you, your crawler will go to this document. You'll pick up the document. All, all you will get is a 
file. Of course, you, by looking at the file, it is easy for any program to understand it's an XML document, not only XML document, it is used NewsML 1.2 namespace. And you can look up new, what is NewsML 1.2. And you know, now I'm not going to give you any further because that is part of the answer. So, So if you think that your semantic engine can, uh, who, who could who do that, then yes. Because we have, you remember, we had discussed the issues like semantic enrichment. But then you need to tell me, what is one example, how would you be dying? What assumptions you're making? Where are you going to get uh, that thing for uh, stuff? Even if you're hand-waving, that's fine. But it's, it's an idea and it's something I need you to think about. And there's, No, I just want you to think about only three because otherwise you will have to write thesis. Yeah. <laughs> so this one is uh, explicitly because it is, uh, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it is structure. The second one is a more like a blog item. But Clearly, there are a number of entities here and relationship and other things that make things semantic. So you need to take an example of that and say, what will you do there? The technique for identifying that an object means x in the previous document is different than the technique that will be necessary to say this is a meaningful object. And you need to explain what you will do with it. How would you identify it? Right? So you remember our discussion on information extraction. Right? And you may want to go back to uh, article by Andrew McCullum and other things that uh, we had pointed to also. But um, so, 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 so processing and finding interesting thing about this would be interesting. Also don't forget that these are some media objects, such as a photograph. And there are semantics associated with that. So try to incorporate that if you can. And help me understand. Number three is Yahoo Photo Gallery. There is a very limited set of information available here. And go back to um, uh, uh, the discussion we have had uh, about content independent, content specific, content dependent metadata. Think about what is available that machine can process, what human has given you that you can process. Think about the comments I had made about uh, photographs and difficulty for machines to listen what photograph was about, but importance of tags and things of that nature. So you can see that. Actually, there's a lot more than that. For example, I want you to recognize that if it's a semantic engine, and this is a news-related page, so I, I would like you to argue what unique semantics you can get out because of the news. For example, um, There are a lot of articles about State of the Union, right? What can, what is, what, what, what is the semantic information that is here? If it is semantic information, that means I should be able to identify uh, corresponding uh, news on Google News or in LA Times. That is about the same event. How would you recognize that? What metadata you out, uh, out, uh, 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 get from this? How do you enrich the metadata? How do you take multiple contents? You remember Twitter's demo? Where we had the links, right? Have we done Twitter's demo? We're not done yet, right? In web interface, we're done yet, yeah. So there is a lot more than you, the, it meets your eyes. 
So even if I have given you only three pages to look at, it's very, very interesting and challenging. And uh, if you have, because you have read those seven search engines or nine search engines, because you have read um, uh, the other, you know, uh, the book chapter and uh, the 2002 article or tally patent or that thing, right? You know a lot of different semantic processing you can do by now. So let me see how you can put that into picture. Okay, now comes another interesting part of it. Um, I told you that I'm uh, not interested in the traditional classroom teaching and I'm interested in participatory learning, right? So how are, here is a, yes, your question? No. So how are, uh, how are we going to um, really do this participatory learning? So here is the idea. Uh, each of, I would like you to limit your answers not more than, pre, my, my ideal size of the answer is about three pages. <laughs> oh, you can, you, you can write a 20 page answer to this question. Uh, well, I am happy if you can give a good answer in one page. I, that is acceptable. The size of the answer won't be uh, the main issue. But addressing various things that I only pointed out and more that I not pointed out. What is semantics? Ask that fundamental question. How can you get semantic information from this kind of data? And if you can answer in whatever space it is, fine. Try to be brief though. Don't just wander around. Give a very concrete point. Because you are going to evaluate it, not me. So each um, each uh, 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 submission will be reviewed by three people, <laughs> and so each each of you have to review three submissions, right? Naturally, right? And I will be re I will be grading you on your reviews of the papers uh, of the submissions. How well you can, right? Then we review good. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, no, but, but yeah, but you still get. Your, so you know, you, yeah, that's a good point. But, but you also get grades from that. Plus, you will have to. You can't give A grades to everybody. So you will have to rank all the three things that you review, as A, B, C. Okay. Only one A, second B, third C. Right. As simple what as that. Is Then you'll have to uh, choose why one is better than another, why one, one is smarter than another. What happens when uh, one document goes to three some high critical <laughs> uh, Since you are my uh, <laughs> assistant, you are coming with the algorithm for doing that. <laughs> 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 so, so, that that is, <laughs> so that reminds me of the game theory, like uh, who admit the criminal, uh, if both admit the criminal, and then both will just have like uh, two years in prison. Yeah. 
Yeah. Then you should, we should get your own paper. This is like, <laughs> a, this is like a mini <laughs> conference. Yeah, let's have exam. Would you like weekly literature? And uh, it's not just you're giving ABC, no. You, it's like when I, suppose I was to grade your uh, you know, thing, I'll be writing comments, right? I'll be saying this, this, is, this doesn't make sense, this, is, this makes sense. I would convey, even though not using those words, this is stupid. You can't use it. So you have to say that without, uh, you know, somebody will complain. You, know, you have to be, you know, and then rightly so. And you don't want to, you know, the, the recipient to feel bad, so you have to be. For giving comments, we need to be very specific. Like, we have to be a very clear understanding of semantics. Like, yes. if I get confused with two, uh, two persons, like, both are good, who should I pick for A? Then I need to be very clear upon the, like, options. So, like so, 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 so for that, I'll give you one more mechanism. The three people who are going to review, even though their remarks will remain anonymous for the uh, recipient or the person, the three of them can have a conference. So they can learn from each other and talk to each other because I, that process itself may help you learn from others. There's no reason that suppose he wrote it and you're reviewing that you know more than him mm -hmm. and vice versa, right? There's no, so, you know, the review doesn't have to be more knowledgeable. Clearly, that won't be the case here all the time. So, uh, but I, you can certainly use that as a, uh, in a way to learn about it, right? Because the exercise is not only uh, that about grading. Exercise is about you're working hard to write your paper. Exercise is for you to think, creative, you know, look at other perspective and learn from that that you do not know. Yeah. And exercise is also about how others think and what it is. Uh, you know, uh, at least for my PhD students, uh, my benchmark is that, see, um, uh, when you, for example, get a PhD, uh, you get also right to guide other students and give confer PhD, right? Mm -hmm. Or teach. So, uh, point is that then, that means they have to have the same abilities in a broad sense that their advisors have, right? Just the same way that I'm expected to have, uh, you know, uh, both the right and um, uh, expertise to grade it's a great thing for you to develop that because it's part of the thinking and part of, uh, also the other thing is that um, like most things in the world, this exercise is uh, that there's no perfect answer. I mean, uh, even a 10% answer of all the possible things would be an excellent answer if you think about it. The problem is extremely challenging and answer is, I mean, I, I think I can, I, I, I won't boast it, but I think we can spend the entire course just talking about this thing. Right? So, 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 um, uh, so roughly each one maybe will have like five huh? articles to read? Each of, each of you will grade three. Three? So we'll have 16 documents, right? Well, it's just a simple thing. If there's 16, uh, 48 total reviews necessary to get three reviews each, so each of you have to read three. Same as. Will there be any rebuttal thing? That's <laughs> great. <laughs> 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 sure. So, so, so um, uh, you can, um, uh, you, you are challenged to rebut, and if you succeed, successfully rebut, and convince me and even, uh, you know, honor those honorous reviews, uh, then, um, or in fact, let's, we can have the whole vote here. Uh, you can rebut, uh, and if you convince um, uh, against uh, the uh, evaluations you got, or if, if, even if you found one fourth of your evaluations to be incorrect, and you come here and convince us, then you automatically get good grade. Oh, A plus plus plus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is a great skill to have, very important. And that is quite possible because, uh, uh, you know, you probably may not be able to write in every detail mm -hmm. and you may be making some assumptions and maybe the reviewer will not be understand your assumption and uh, you'll have to, uh, you can come and justify, I had made this assumption, well, I implied, see, the language is good enough, maybe not perfect and so I deserve uh, to be, you know, yeah, positive. Okay? All right. 
So um, there's only 10 minutes left. So is, should I start on the, where is the, where is the class going? This one? Are you the presenter? Or well, I am? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, OK. You are the presenter. I thought that uh, 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 our, our friend who did not come here was going to. Ah, this is a great topic. So we, no, let's use five minutes. Oh, look, I think that we should take a video cut, right? So maybe you should uh, do it next. So um, let us do the following then for another five minutes and then we can call it quits. So you also see this cloud thing there. Right? Um, let me just open up by, uh, are there any um, um, questions anybody wants to ask right now on any of the things we've covered so far? say uh, if I uh, talk about healthcare, let's say clinical care, right? 
patient care, uh, and in um, the office patient care, let's say, or in hospital patient care, right? Um, then uh, I I would I could use domain independent ontology like time because time is still important. You want to be able to say first patient had this disease, I gave this drug, he got this, you know, then he got this test, he got better, whatever. Right? So the time is still going to be used. Uh, followed by uh, something related to health. Then when you take health, they are going, the health is a very broad area that, that there. It would have, um, health is such a broad area that it is not that conceivable that you have one single ontology for health. So we will break it down in multiple different areas. Right? So you would say, uh, I would uh, talk about epidemiology as an example or I would talk about um, things related to everything about uh, pharmaceutical drugs. I would talk about everything that is treatment. I would talk about anything, everything that is diagnosis. So these are major concepts and you could conceive of ontology of some of these things, like SNOMED would have two of those things, you know, would have number of diagnosis and treatment altogether, and you can use that for the purpose of, as an ontology as we did in active semantic electronic medical record system. Um, uh, and we had, in that case, separate ontology for drugs. But uh, you can have combined ontology also, because you, somebody may have already uh, combined um, uh, every uh, uh, drug with uh, all the symptoms, which is typically part of the drug ontology. But then, uh, uh, disease also have symptoms. So symptoms is a common point, so you may uh, figure out a way as to hear all the pharmaceutical drugs, here are all the symptoms, here are all the disease. And treatment is supposed to, see, you know, it also cures some symptoms also. So these all kinds of interactions that occur that way, and you can use that as a vehicle for, inter, you know, interconnecting the ontologies, or make it a single ontology if that works out for you, right? Um, and in, but, but by and large, most people would try to segment it and interconnect it. So when the relationships are uh, dense, you will try to put all those concepts in the same ontology, and when you can find a very natural, large clusters, you will call them different ontologies, and make connections between them. Most of the ontologies will be still connected, because all they relate to health, and disease, and symptoms, and treatments, and drugs, and all these, and lab tests, everybody has, everything is interconnected, right? So you have connections across them. Now, when you build these kind of ontologies, uh, you actually bring in the facts. Now, uh, there are, of course, going to be a lot of challenges. For example, uh, there is likely, unlikely to be uh, either, either there is a certain level of consensus already in the discipline, or uh, there is always going to be specialized knowledge. So think about you having something, be, uh, some health problem, and you go to see your general practitioner. The knowledge that he or she will apply in understanding and uh, you know, uh, uh, in taking care of what you have, would potentially be a subset of, or even sometimes different than, the knowledge that a specialist will apply. Right. So, uh, even when both of them are dealing with the same decision problem, things will change. Right. And, and for example, suppose I have a simple blood pressure. I mean, this is expected to be taken care of at the level of uh, the primary physician, right? And, and there are these five major classes of uh, uh, drugs you may give, and of course you should be advising the patient on uh, exercise, uh, reducing the salt, and um, reducing the stress, and this kind of stuff, right? So that will be normal, this will be done. But uh, if it is um, uh, uh, referred to the specialist, a cardiologist, let's say, or cardiovascular, or even further on to a cardiovascular surgeon, clearly the things are different. It is unlikely that cardiologist is going to spend a lot of time in generalities and uh, I mean, you, you typically uh, expect uh, that such things as reason sort and has been all taken care of before it comes to it. And he's going to be focusing more on the drugs. And if it goes to cardiovascular surgeon, he's, going to, he's typically going to focus on that specialized knowledge that is basically operations and procedures. And not even that as much as uh, even drugs, specialized drugs. 
So the specialist will talk about uh, a, a multiple drug treatment. They very often, you know, people with high, uh, more advanced uh, uh, um, blood pressure problems or blood pressure with diabetes are on combination therapy. And typically, you get to the cardiologist to do that. And then cardiovascular surgeon is going to take very specialized knowledge, and he's not going to worry too much about drugs and such. He's going to worry about, you know, <coughs> where I need to put a stent or do a balloon therapy or whatever I need to do. Anyway, uh, continue your question. Yeah, uh, so I think what, what I want to ask is, uh, so if NLP can be successful with uh, these domains, small domains, uh, but can semantics can uh, get into the table? If, if this can, AG, AG same as all can be uh, encoded in code. Not in open domain. You can't say in the word net that age is same as uh, age, uh, old. Not the same, but uh, you know, old is uh, is based on the age. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, something that you interpret, right? You can uh, you can do it in a rule, right? Absolutely. Right. So this is you can do the same thing in ontology too. Yes, absolutely. So what? So so then just to uh, clarify further, what would happen typically is that either somebody will write a rule. As, as linguists would do typically, right? Uh, and Narayan would do that. Uh, versus somebody would uh, um, uh, train an algorithm to identify that by giving training sets. And that will be encoded in a black box. Yes, machine learning algorithm. Machine learning algorithm. Versus somebody would identify that in a, in a rule, uh, sorry, in ontology. Uh, quite possibly as a constraint or a rule in an ontology, because you can specify rules on the ontology itself, right? Using RIF or SWAN or something. And uh, using semantic annotations, look for you know uh, the rules to be fired and uh, utilize in the understanding. So what's the difference that semantic based makes uh, versus uh, rule based? Uh, so typically, um, uh, um, Semantic web allows you to uh, uh, use a, uh, a framework for capturing this knowledge base, and that uh, this not then supposed to be an agreement around this knowledge base, the ontological commitment, and standards language for that. Although there are lang languages also well, you know, utilized for rule specifications at that level also. When people uh, are so, I know I know companies they have. 100 uh, people writing rules in, let's say, financial services market related text processing, sitting in Croatia or sitting in uh, uh, Romania and so on and so forth. Right? So this is routinely done. And they would be focusing on taking the natural language understanding that human has and codifying it in, a, in the rules that they like. As opposed to putting up in a an ontology with something that is supposed to be uh, applicable for the domain of the where the ontology is applicable. So uh, the way it is done, the use of the terms and the concepts already in the ontology, that is different. I think we should uh, wrap up uh, because he also, uh, you know, oh, no, it's okay. You okay? Yeah. yeah. So. So, so you see, uh, um, there will be a lot more use, typically I would expect, a lot more use when you do it in the ontological framework, when you do rules processing in the ontological framework. Now, this is a pragmatic consideration, not really a theoretical consideration. So, so typically, rules are written by different people, and in fact, the big problem that uh, these rule-based approaches, linguistic approaches have, is that there is a lot of clashes. Because the 100 people writing rules, and they, the rules will, uh, um, uh, uh, naturally conflict. That creates a huge problem in those situations systems as far as I understand. In the case of uh, knowledge base, you are supposed to have tools to verify and uh, do better job. But, but still you still have a problem. Is, yeah, but still that is feasible only up to a certain extent, right? Yeah. Uh, you can't, uh, whatever you can express in our low RBFS, you can uh, uh, search for the inconsistency. Not You're not supposed to have the tools to find consist inconsistent better. That yes. means you, you write a customized tool. Pardon? That means you, you have to write a customized tool to uh, 
that uh, whatever the intents that you suspect can be there. Kind of thing, right? uh, uh, there is there is uh, some interesting material. In fact, people did some work on that about uh, uh, checking the consistency of knowledge base using the reasoners that are already available. So certain level of it will be certain type of inconsistency will can be found by our reasoners. And there is some literature on that. So is that to say that uh, you know um, you can do the same thing with role engine too, but uh, you said the ontology is to make a wide agreement and to reuse it. Is that answer is yes or no? Is you can answer it yes or is it more beyond that? Use of use of role engines and use of ontologies can do the same thing in this kind of thing, in this kind of uh, uh, problem. But use of ontology is to make a broad agreement and maybe to uh, go a little bit more into abstract level. Yes, but uh, uh, with some caveat in that when people write those uh, rules, uh, the, uh, the linguists write to capture the rules, they have more flexibility with exceptions and new situations, then typically you can do it with the ontological approach. So there are some disadvantages also. The kind of unique situations that they can model there is typically not what the, because the ontology and the rules on the ontologies are typically done with regards to uh, the common knowledge and agreed upon knowledge, not with the idiosyncrasy of natural language. question about time, right? You can solve that in very specific applications, right? You can uh, uh, you can write a program to cater such queries later, uh, earlier kind of thing. But the thing is you can, with ontology kind of thing, you can uh, abstract it out and make, a, make it a common problem and all the subproblems can be instance of that particular thing and you provide a solution to the, uh, the, the high level thing and the uh, solution can be shared by everybody. It's not that you cannot implement Java program to solve those queries. Well, you think about writing a Java program, it will only expect inputs in a very well, uh, very restricted way. And uh, the variations by which, uh, in which this uh, question can be asked is very significant. Then you can ask, uh, questions on the ontology in the, in, in the syntactic so, so language, right? Here is a thought, um, and I can't uh, totally vouch for uh, validity, but you really have to take the approach of the kind that IBM Watson has done, where there is a whole bunch of different techniques are used, and there is a voting across them, and um, uh, uh, among the many answers, one is picked. As opposed to, what happens is the reason uh, why Watson in many situations is uh, much is, is uh, more sophisticated than our simplistic semantic web solution would be that um, um, using the semantic web framework as we typically use in you know kind of pedagogical ways here, um, you would typically uh, get only one answer and typically deal with uh, something that is uh, yeah, correct or not correct. While Watson uh, kind of approach would be a uh, lot more able to deal with um, uh, uh, you know one answer being more correct than other answer for that question. You know, which is very you know more, more, lot more nuanced kind of stuff. Maybe uh, if we have uh, time uh, later on in this course, we will probably study the you know thing on Watson. Of course, we are going to have a very good opportunity to interact with this reality anyway. Uh, so we can use that also for time to. We we'll start with that, and if you want, we can continue with more details after that. All right. I hope uh, uh, all of you are thinking about your projects. Can I start receiving the, the project descriptions? Uh, uh, in fact, you should start posting it on your uh, community website. So here's my draft. And make it link readable, and uh, I'll request uh, Sarasi to just make an index for all that from one page, so all the projects can be reached from one page. Thank you.